Thank you very much, everyone, for tuning into today's show. Today's guest is Mark Anthony. Mark Anthony is a hypnotist who both works with people as well as works in the entertainment industry. As well as that, uh, Mark is also an author of his book, uh, The Rogue Hypnotist, um, The Memoirs of Mark Anthony. Um, but without further ado, thank you very much for coming on to the show today, Mark. Yeah, thanks, Neil. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. You're welcome. So, Mark, tell me a bit about yourself. Okay. Oh, I grew up as a complete street rogue, um, and then I got into hypnosis many, many years ago, nearly 17 years ago. I'd had an interest in hypnosis for years and years. Uh, what I found I was doing, even as a complete street rogue, was um, manipulation on a lot of people. And manipulation, as you probably know, is actually hypnosis. So, you know, hypnotic language and manipulation and things like that is actually hypnotic language. So what I was using in my younger days as a complete street rogue, I then started using in a more professional role as a hypnotist later on in life. Uh, I now travel the world on many, many cruise lines. Uh, I work for five different cruise lines. I've got a clinic, a therapy clinic, hypnosis therapy clinic, where I've got other uh, people that have got rooms here as well. I perform shows all over the world as well as j not just on cruise ships. Um, I've got a training academy where I train other people to be hypnotists. I've got many, many things out there for other hypnotists as well. So I'm, I'm a really busy man in that sense i love what i do even after 17 years of doing it full time and i'm always thinking of big bigger things i'm always thinking of the big picture there's always a big picture for me uh, and i love it beautiful so um what do you mean by rogue uh, street rogue what what do you mean by that okay well i, I grew up with my I, to give you an idea i grew up with the best friends that i grew up with uh, four of them are now dead from drug overdoses uh, I went through a lot of domestic violence as a kid. I went through children's home. I went through detention centre, as in young offenders detention centre. And I was just a complete rogue, a complete street rogue. Um, you know, we would mug people. We would break in cars, into houses, into factories. And it was just the way I was brought up. It was a single mum. I had a single mum by the time I was all the domestic violence had finished. And, um, you know, it's, I've got sisters. I've got one sister that's just come out of prison. She was in there for a life. It was a life sentence for murder. And we just grew up in a very rough environment. But you know what? The, the rough environment we grew up in, the, the camaraderie with some of those people was the best camaraderie you could ever ask for. So I learned many things. I just chose a different path to the friends that I grew up with. And as I say, four of them are now dead from drug overdoses. And I chose the right path because the right path, the right path to take. And they chose the left path, which is the path of destruction. And hence the reason they're no longer here. Well, so I really commend you, you know, because I understand growing, I live in personally in, in the southeast of Melbourne in an area that can be quite rough as well. So um, it's quite easy to get stuck in that um, in that mode of living. And uh, yeah, I really commend you for uh, getting yourself out of it. So um. Were you raised in England? I was, yes. I was raised in South East London. Um, it's about probably about 30 minutes from East London, which East London's uh, used to be a very, very rough and ready area. And East London's known for many um, vagabonds and thieves and everything else. So I grew up just through the tunnel, a place called Blackwall Tunnel. And I grew up through there, which is like half an hour away from East London. But I, I can honestly say I learned so, so much on the streets. Um, I very much dislike school. I did really, and today I don't believe that um, the schools teach our kids anything about real life. And, you know, I've got four kids now and I absolutely adore them to pieces. But I truly don't believe many schools, if any schools, teach our kids the real life. That's, you know, I grew up and I'm a great believer if, if you can read and write. And, you know, if you can read, write and know basic maths, I, I believe you can do anything. So that's that's my philosophy on schools. Yeah, no, that's all good. I, I get that. Um, I understand that, you know, the school system, even though they teach you some good stuff out there, they really don't teach life skills as such, you know, um, the things that you need to be aware of and how to move forward once you finish high school. Because once, you, once you're out in the real world, you really are on your own, aren't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and that's that's probably why 
Look, if if somebody wants to be an airline pilot or an accountant or a space, you know, a, an astronaut or something, I understand they've got to sit a lot of further exams and things, and that's where university, more than school, would come into it. You know, and I, I just believe higher education is fantastic for people that want to do something else. But if you're going to become an entrepreneur and work for yourself, uh, I, I truly believe that you've got to be a person. You've got to have that in you. You've got to have the go get, like I said to you earlier. Mm. And unless you stick your neck out to go and get it like you've done, yep. then you're not going to get anything. Full stop. You're going to be a nine to fiver. You're always going to work for somebody else, which suits a lot of people. They're quite happy doing that. So I'm not putting anyone down. I'm just saying as an entrepreneur or somebody that wants to work for themselves, you've really got to be, you, you've got to have common sense. You've got to know, you know, you've got to be streetwise. And that's the sort of learnings I personally believe in, you know, the school of hard knocks. I get that. I get that a lot. It's, uh, yeah, life's not easy once you get out there. But, um, yeah, you will get knocked around a bit. And um, as long as you get back up, um, that's all that really matters, to be honest, because uh, if you stay down, then you don't really move forward. Um, that's right. So... I know you touched a little bit, but um, what made you get into hypnotism as a profession? Uh, because I could, I love helping people. I love people. I'm really, I'm a people person. I've tried not to be many times, believe it or not. And I've tried to harden up in that sense and not be such a people person. Um, I'm not saying people walk all over me because, again, I'm, I'm, I can cut people out of my life very quickly. And I do sometimes. So the moment I feel somebody's walking over me, I cut them out of my life. And, you know, to me, hypnosis was just one of those progressions where because I love people, I love helping people. I love, uh, you know, I love the mind. I, I know that we can do pretty much anything with the mind. And, and that's probably why I got into it. I saw a hypnotist. Well, I was in the children's home and I first saw a movie called Svengali, which was a, an old black and white movie. And it was great, you know, it was, I just loved this thing that this guy was doing, whether you want to call it power, whether you want to call it um, manipulation, whether whatever you wanted to call it. And then years later, I started sort of reading more hypnosis books. And then one day I decided um, to get into hypnosis. I read as much as I can. The stage hypnosis, nobody would teach me at the time. They kept it very close to their chest. You know, a lot of the hypnotists years ago are very, very protective when it comes to giving out their... I suppose secrets if they want to call it that and I had to learn it myself but I just found that I was good at it I enjoyed it I loved it I love seeing people laugh it's the most precious thing to to help somebody laugh and have fun um, and to be able to help them with therapy as well like, what a bonus you know and that's that's why I got into it so um you had to really self-teach yourself um hypnos hypnosis um to be able to get into this sort of industry because uh no one really wanted to teach you out there. There was no schools. Is that right? Well, there wasn't any schools at the time for stage hypnosis. So the hypnotherapy, when I came to Australia um, 17 years ago, uh, I then took a certification hypnosis course. And there were many people teaching that, but not stage hypnosis. So I did the hypnosis therapy course because I don't believe anybody should be doing stage hypnosis until they're clinically trained first. And again, that's just my personal, um, you know, I've that, my personal belief. Um, but although many people out there are training just anybody for the dollar, it's not for me. I believe somebody should be a clinical hypnotist first and then a stage hypnotist. Um, and I then went and taught myself stage hypnosis and I loved it. Oh, wow. So um, it was uh, more the, you know, the entertainment side of it that brought you to hypnosis, even though you do have a good foundation um, of believing that you should be a master at it first in helping people before you get into the entertainment side of it yeah not necessarily a master i just believe neil that they should know the they should be a certified clinical hypnotist not they don't even have to do it i've got hypnotists that i've trained that are clinically trained and then they're doing stage but i've got them you know some of them don't want to do the clinical side they just want to go into the stage but i won't train anybody unless they're a clinical hypnotist first. And that's why they've gone to clinical work or certification so that they can then come and train with me as a stage hypnotist. I believe in professionalism. I, I'm truly, you know, I believe in that a lot. Okay. So um, 
what's some of the types of work you've done? Like I know you touched on it a little bit. Um, yeah. What's some of the types of work that you do in um, the hypno- hypnosis uh, field of, uh, yeah, the hypnosis oh, field? Wow. Lots and lots and lots, yeah. So I, I deal with, obviously you've got your basics, like you stop smoking, you lose weight. Um, I've dealt with people that have had strokes. I've dealt with a lot of motivation, you know, self-motivation and empowerment. I'm a great believer in that, um, especially with uh, with women nowadays. You know, and many of them, probably cause what I went through with my mum and, you know, the way she was treated when she was younger. I believe that, you know, for many women to self-empower nowadays is a great thing. So I deal a lot with self-empowerment. Um, anxiety, stress, you know, you get even even kids, high school kids, uh, they're stressing over exams. They're stressing when they leave school or high school because they don't know what they're going to do. I'm a great believer in just, you know, a, look, if a few swear words come out of my mouth today, you're going to have to excuse me, but okay. I, I truly believe, you know, fuck all that. Don't worry about it. I didn't know what I wanted to do until my 30s. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't realize that becoming a hypnotist was what I was, what I was made to do. So, you know, I'm a great believer in if they're panicking and getting worried and anxious about doing the final exams at school, don't worry about it. They'll find what they want to do. So, you know, that's that's how I look at life. Find what you want to do and then you'll you'll love it, I promise. So your main drive was to be an entrepreneur, was it? And then yes. basically hypnosis was something that you enjoyed doing. So you were yep. able to take that and, you know, basically run with it to become the person you want to be as an entrepreneur and basically share it with the world. Oh, absolutely. I, I used to... When I was even at school, I used to bunk school all the time. Uh, they call it bunking school in the UK. I don't know what they call it here. Is oh, it hopping school or wagging school? Uh, or? Wagging school. <laughs> yeah, so that, so I used to do that all the time, all the time. I really disliked school. Um, I didn't have a lot of respect for any people when I was younger, and that's that was to my detriment. So I've now learned the hard way. <clears throat> um, but I used to buy and sell things even at school, you know, even – I mean, my book tells it all. I will put a link to the ebook version of my book, and then if people want to get the audio or the the soft book, but I'll put it. I'll give it to you, and then you can put it on your link or whatever, and they can have that for free to read it. But it tells them more about that sort of stuff. Um, but yes, an entrepreneur is exactly what I knew I'd be, and and I'm still an entrepreneur now as well. But it's mainly to do with a lot of hypnosis programs, courses um, to help other hypnotists succeed. Okay, I'll, I'll share that in the description of the video. Um, sure. So, what does it work for everybody? Like with hypnosis, um, I remember I was on the was it one of the cruises that you performed on, and um, I wanted to yeah I wanted to be on the stage and have you do whatever you what you do, and then unfortunately you went around and you were tapping everyone on the shoulder and you're like yeah you tapped me and I was like oh bugger I have to basically <laughs> jump off the stage. Um, yeah. Is it easy hypnosis working with it? Does it work for everyone? Uh, what are some of the challenges? Okay, well, hypnosis will work for pretty much anybody. On stage, because I've got to work very quickly, because I need to hypnotize them as quick as I can so that I can get on with the show. Mm. In a therapy session, my therapy sessions are up to two hours. So we can relax them gently, nice and gently, and it's called a progressive relaxation. And on stage, it's obviously a lot quicker. We need to get it over and done with. But pretty much anybody can be hypnotized, not necessarily to a deep, deep level, but they can be hypnotized unless they're totally drug fucked out their skull, Mm -hmm. unless they've got mental issues or unless they're really drunk. So otherwise, because they need to focus and concentrate. And that's, that's how hypnosis works. It's all about that focus, concentration, and that's what takes so it's like it's about trying to get into that deep state, yeah? Um, yeah, not necessarily a deep state, but in that relaxed state. So what you're doing, you're bypassing the conscious part of the mind, that's the fight or flight mind, yeah. and you're tapping into the unconscious, the subconscious part of the mind. So you're getting that to relax everything. And then when they start relaxing, that's all you need. Okay, I get that, yeah, because I was really uh, nervous, I was really conscious, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But I didn't allow myself to drop back into that um yeah to into that relaxed state because i was 
I was pretty revved up, really, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I couldn't wait to, yeah, I was like, yeah, I came running on the stage and everything. And so, yeah. So um, hypnosis, how how does it work? Like um, what is it that it does with the brain basically to allow changes within people? Okay. Well, obviously anything we think of is like our hearts. They're beating unconsciously. We're breathing unconsciously. So basically what the mind's doing is doing all these things in the background. And we don't need to know how it's doing them. We just know it is. And that's what hypnosis does. So it does things in the background. So after a hypnosis session, it will start doing those suggestions that we've given your mind in the background. And we don't know. We don't need to know. It's it's like if your if your lights were turned off in your house now, it would be pitch black. Yeah. If you turn the light on and it lit up the room, do you know exactly how it lit up the room? Do you know how the cables work, how the wiring works, how the fuse box works to light up that room? Not necessarily. You just know it's lit up the room. Yeah, I get and what you're saying. And that's what we need to know. So we don't need to know exactly what happens in the background for it to light up the room. We just want it to light up the room. And that's the same with hypnosis. So hypnosis works in the background. We don't need to know what it's doing in the background or or how it's working Mm. we just need to know the result that we're going to get from it and you know it will do pretty much anything you ask it to do so you've got a really good way of tapping into people's brains basically um through your methods right Uh, pretty much every hypnotist has yeah and again this is why i'm so i'm i'm very um i'm very strict on who i teach hypnosis to and, and I won't just teach anybody. I want to know if they've got a criminal record um, and if they have, what's it for? Yeah. And when was it? You know, and those sorts of things, because like, any, you know, somebody actually said the reason for that, I've got a criminal record from when I was younger. Yeah. And that was for stealing cars, missing out on, you know, all, all these other things and doing these other things. But it was nothing, you know, it's. I believe we can change people. Somebody said to me recently, a leopard can't change its spots. Well, I'm a prime example that that's absolute bollocks. Uh, A leopard can change its spots if and only if it chooses to. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, to me, I'm a true believer in if we change this, which we can, it will do anything for us. So if you want to change your life, if you want to go down a new road, the right road, because it's the right road to take, yeah, then you can. But that's your choice. Neil, to me, in in every seminar and every course that I ever do, I I write on the board before I start them. There's three things in life that I abide by. And I believe every human should, if they truly want to succeed in whatever they want to succeed in. Number one, okay, so it's take ownership. So number one is take ownership of the things you do wrong. Don't blame the rest of the world. Don't whinge and bitch that everyone else has done this and the world's doing this to you. You know, it's whatever, religion, creed, color, whatever. Don't blame, don't bring them cards out. Just use what you've got here to move yourself forward. Because the more we blame everything else in the world, we're not moving forward. What we're doing is wallowing in our own shit. Yeah. Yeah, that's all we're doing. So to me, so take ownership of the things you do wrong, take ownership of them. If you've done something wrong, take ownership. If you've done something right, number two, if you've done something right, take ownership of it. Be proud, be happy, be confident that you've taken ownership, that you've done something right. And number three is about choices. Everything in your life that you do, you make a choice. You choose to do it or don't do it. And that's what you've done. You've chosen to do your, your podcasts. And, and you're doing them. It's choice. So that's the three things that I abide by. Okay. So, um, mm. yeah, so basically, yeah, take ownership of everything and move yourself forward, basically. Um, don't allow the world to bring you along or land everything in your lap, basically. You have to go out and get it. Absolutely, yeah, because anyone that whinges and bitches, I don't have a lot of time for. I'm always, again, you see, even with my clients, I get clients come back to me or recommend me Mm. because I am quite harsh. And I, you know, I'm a great believer in the more we pussyfoot around a client and mollycoddle them and wrap them in cotton wool, you're doing them no favors at all. 
the moment you say, right, stop being a loser, get on with it, here's the tools to do it, stop blaming everybody else, here's the tools to do it, go and do it. If they don't use the tools that you've given them, then they can go along the left path. Because I, I, I won't waste a lot of my time with them after that if they're not going to use the tools I've given them. So um, I believe that you've, you're the one that should make the choices. So you've got to basically help yourself, basically. Absolutely. You, you can always get help. Obviously, we've all got mentors. I've got mentors. Mm. I've got people that help me. I help others. And, you know, we've, we've all got to have some sort of help there. But the moment you start blaming the rest of the world and not taking ownership, then that's when really you might as well stay on the left path because you're not going to go along the right path and change yourself because you're full of excuses. So, um, and, yep. yeah. no, keep going. Please, Sorry. No, please go ahead. Um, so do you get many people that come to learn from you? Do you like, is there, is there heaps of people out there that want to get into hypnosis? There is now, and the reason for that is because working on the cruise ships for the last seven years, I've been on hundreds of cruise ships, hundreds of cruise lines and hundreds of cruises, so I've not really had time to um, do the courses. Mm. But since being on land now, due to yeah. COVID-19, I've now, you know, the hypnosis courses to me now are one of the most important things that I'm doing at the moment. So I want to train as many hypnotists as I can. I want people to learn self-hypnosis. I give them a, an intro to hypnosis, then a certification in hypnosis. So it's a one, it's a wonderful profession, you know, and, and people need to realize how good it can be. All of us need therapy. Every single you, yeah. me, whoever's watching this, everybody needs some sort of therapy, even if it's for sleep issues or relaxation issues. We all need therapy. So hypnosis is getting bigger and bigger. Oh, wow. Like I've always been curious about it. Um, yeah. Does self how, how effective is self hypnosis? Like, do you need to have any prerequisites? No, no, not at all. Look, everyone can use self hypnosis. Again, it's that choice. Okay. Whether we choose to put, you know, put the effort into it and do it. It's like somebody doing yoga or meditation. Yeah. If you don't put the effort into it, or you know, if you don't do it, of course, it's going to be no use to you. That's like self hypnosis. Unless you put the effort and do what we've asked you to do, hmm. you're not going to do it. So it's no use to you, like anything. Oh, okay. So just coming back to the hypnosis thing with you treating people, how many sessions does it take for someone to be able to achieve results? Is there a certain, certain number or can yeah. it be an ongoing thing? Good question, mate, yeah, because I get asked the same question so often. And I always say, Neil, it's, it's like anything, you know, what might take you one session – it might take your lovely wife three sessions. It might take your next door neighbor five sessions. We're all different as human beings. Yeah. And, you know, these hypnotists that say, oh, I can help you in one session, that's great. Mm. But most of the time they can't. And, you know, there are some out there that will say they can and many of them can. And I used to say that when I years ago. Uh, but now I say, look, let's just look for an end result. Yeah. You know, I can't promise you it's going to take one, two, three sessions. Let's just look for an end result. And that's what I'll get them, a good positive end result. Okay. So what are some of the main things that people come to see you for? Most of the time it's uh, anxiety, stress, sleep issues, uh, stop smoking, lose weight. I, I really, really enjoy the ones, you know, with people like yourself that want to do something, but they don't realize that they can. They don't realize they've got it in here to go and get it. Yeah. And, and I love that. You know, I deal with a lot of entrepreneurs um, from, you know, entrepreneurs that are starting with nothing to multi-millionaires and some billionaires I've dealt with. So I love dealing with that sort of person because everyone's got it in them, Neil. You know, if they really, really want it, but not everybody wants it. And I quite understand that. That's what I'm saying. There's your nine to fivers, your followers, and that's absolutely fine. You know, as long as they're happy doing what they're doing, if they're not happy, once again, I'm a great believer in get the fuck out, go and find something else that you're happy about. Yeah, that's I, just my philosophy on life. Yeah, I get that. As we were saying before, work a day in your life, never work a job. Was it work? No, do a job you like, never work a day in your life. Um, that's it. Absolutely. Great quotes. Great yeah. sayings. I love sayings and quotes, as you know. Love them. Yeah. Um, so, um, what's the difference like, and I, I hope this is not treadling on anything uh, negative, but uh, what's the difference between psychologists and 
hypnosis or is hip- hypnotherapy? Yeah. Psychologists learn a bit of hypnosis in their tra- in their training. And hypnotists learn a bit of psychology in their training. So with a hypnotist, we're looking to resolve the problem quickly. With a psychologist, although they're they're looking to resolve the problem, you know, some people go to a a psychologist for years and not many people go to a hypnotist for years. And what we're doing, we're looking to get the answer out of here. We're looking to solve the problem for them and let them move on in their life in a happy, healthy, positive way. Whereas if somebody goes to a psychologist, they're looking to do the same thing, but many times it doesn't work that way. And and it's been, I've had people that have been to a psychologist before and then come to me and they might have been to the psychologist for years and they've come to me and within three to five sessions, we've got a great result for them. And obviously the psychologist's work has helped. I always say as many modalities as you can to get the result is absolutely fine. So if you've been to a psychologist, a bone therapist, a, you know, a, a healer, and then a hypnotist, and all of those things combined have helped you, brilliant. I'm just a great believer in that. Awesome. So um, with self with self self hypnosis, um, I think I might have asked you already, but uh, what is it like? Um, how 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 can I say um. It it does work for everyone, right? Um, but does it? Uh, does it? Ever, does anyone ever have any challenges with it? Pretty much, you know, most people. Most people have challenges. It's like anything, Neil. Mm. Unless we practice all the time, then we're not going to get the results. You know, you've got to. It's like anything that I I help people with. It's that repetition. You know, okay. when we do a hypnosis therapy session. It's we've got a, a recipe that mm. we go through, like baking a cake. Yeah. So we've got the recipe that we go through, and that's the same self hypnosis. So there's a certain recipe that they need to to follow to to take them into that nice relaxed state known as self hypnosis. Have you ever meditated? Uh, yes, I have. Excellent, perfect. It's very similar to meditation, uh, and that's what hypnosis is. Hypnosis, as a hypnotist, we're a guide mm. because all all hypnosis is self hypnosis. Okay. So if people refuse to be hypnotized, and that's why on the stage, I don't know if you notice, but if anyone's sitting there like that, yeah. I'll say uncross your arms because subconsciously it could mean resistance. Oh, okay. So if some of them are refusing to be hypnotized and they're going, yeah, go on, then hypnotize me, then I'll let them go. Yeah. Because it's not about you. It's not about you going against the hypnosis, even in self hypnosis. It's about letting yourself go. Follow that recipe. And just let yourself go, and eventually, through repetition, you'll go deeper and deeper. Okay, so is it is self hypnosis just about listening to audio, um, to someone talking, or is it more along the lines of incarnations? No, it's more about um, it's about breathing techniques. It's about um, listening to that voice from the hypnotist yeah. or your voice. You know, we we teach in the self hypnosis courses that we do. See, we offer free self hypnosis courses, mm. and the reason I do that is because I want people to realise how beneficial it can be. It can change your life. Yeah. Self hypnosis can change your life in in one day, if because we give you the tools to go away and learn self hypnosis, and and it's all about repetition. Unless you're going to keep doing it, you'll never get better at it. Same as you. Unless yeah. you carry on doing your podcasts you'll never get better at it. Yeah. So that's how it works. So what inspired you to run these free courses for people? I've been really blessed. And for those that read my book, you know, I've been really blessed in the fact that, yes, I've worked hard for it. and I've, Nobody can ever take that away from me. I've worked very hard. And I've, I'm now, you know, at a stage where I can go, right, I can offer free self-hypnosis courses because I want the world to know about hypnosis. And if they start with self-hypnosis and then they go, wow, I love this hypnosis stuff, then they can come and attend an intro to hypnosis course. And then they'll learn more about hypnosis and then get the certification. I just believe that, you know, I pay trainers to do those self-hypnosis courses, so I lose money. Yeah. But you know what? If It's like next weekend we've got 15 people coming to a self-hypnosis course because the restrictions have been lifted to 20. Yeah. So I've got... Um, I've got four other people, four helpers, and I've got the trainer. So that's 20. Yeah. So those 15 people that are coming for nothing, 
if they go away and only five of them go and carry on with the self-hypnosis, fantastic. That's five more people that know how good hypnosis, self-hypnosis is. Okay. So do you do them around the country or is it just in Queensland? Well, as I said, because I've only just stopped with the ships a lot more, mm. I'll now start to do them around the country. So, you know, that's the whole idea that we get it. We spread it throughout the country of Australia and then we take it even further. I don't really want to do it online. A lot of, you know, there's some hypnosis courses that they do online. I, I really don't think you can learn it the same way. I believe face-to-face is the only way you can do it because you need to see their body language. You need to see the expressions on their face. You need to see so much more about them. And then once they go from the self-hypnosis to the intro and the certification, they're forever hypnotizing loads and loads of people in those courses. Wow. And we teach them that in that recipe. So there's so much more to it than, you know, uh, and I, I really don't want to do it online and put it abroad yet. I, Australia and is really where it's at for me at the moment. Uh, okay. So um, what was it like working on the cruise liners? How did you get into that? Oh, believe it or not, I, I used to work for a company called Sexpo. I don't know oh, if you've heard yeah, of Sexpo. Yeah, I'm sure you have. Yeah, yeah. I thought you might have. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to work for Sexpo, and I worked there for seven years. So I toured the world with Sexpo, and I did an adult show, an adult hypnosis show. And it wasn't filthy. It was just naughty. Um, mm. I'm, I'm renowned as being Australia's naughtiest hypnotist. Oh, okay. And it doesn't say Australia's filthiest hypnotist. It says Australia's naughtiest hypnotist. So I put together a, a, an adult-only show. Mm. And then somebody came to Sexpo, a comedian, a top comedian. I won't mention his name, but he came to Sexpo and he saw me on stage. And he came up to me after and he said, he said, what, what else do you do? And I said, oh, I do corporate events and other things. And he went, oh, have you ever worked on the cruise ships? And I said, no. He said, you've got to work on a cruise ship. He said, I'm going to put your name forward to my agent. He said, because I loved your show. And I thought, yeah, yeah, of course, mate. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, yeah, everyone says these things and you yeah. never hear from them. Sure enough, three days later, an agent called me and he said, uh, this comedian has highly recommended your show and you. And, and I would really like to get you on the ships, and that's where it started. And then I was literally on the ship nearly every 10 days for wow. years. Now, what was it like being on the ship? Do you, do you enjoy – you obviously enjoy doing uh, the sh- cruise shows, yeah? Oh, I do, mate. Uh, like, I, I'm a, like I said, I love seeing people laugh. I love seeing people laugh. I am cheeky. I am naughty. Hmm. Um, but that's – I'm not filthy. Like I say, I know where the line is. 75% of my clients in my therapy clinic are women. Yeah. So I know where the line is when I do a show. I never step over the line. So naughty is as far as it goes. Um, I never make anyone strip or anything and, you know, do anything filthy. Nobody does anything like that. Yeah. But it's naughtiness, and adults love a bit of naughtiness, a bit of cheekiness. So when I do a show, just to see the adults laughing, and then if I do a family show, the kids laughing. If I do a corporate event, the attendees laughing after so many days of training in their corporate event or whatever they're doing. So it's it's great, you know, just to see people laugh. I love making people laugh and having fun. I take the piss out of myself. I don't have a problem with that. So, you know, I'm just one of those people, and it, it, it just went hand in hand. It was fantastic, mm. yeah. I yeah, was no, very lucky. It's a good, warm feeling seeing people enjoy what you do, really. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, same as you. People yeah. would love seeing you do what you do yeah. because you're happy doing it. So um, what are some of the things you get them to do in this naughty show of yours? Well, the naughty show, it's um, I, I might get them to imagine they're smoking a big joint. So I might have a, a you know a thing that I've got joints that I make. So yeah. I'll have a big joint and it'll be this big. Yeah. And they go, <laughs> and I'll say, as soon as you take a puff on it, you'll be stoned off your tree. And, oh, right. and it's got a laughing tobacco in it. <laughs> so the moment you puff it, You'll be yeah. stoned and you'll laugh and laugh. And so that's one of them. Then they start watching movies when they're stoned. Yeah, yeah. So I'll go from a funny movie and then I'll go, when I click my fingers, it's going to turn into a sad movie. And just the expressions and the way they are instantly change within a split second. Then they'll go to a scary movie. Then they'll go to a naughty movie. <laughs> so they're watching all these movies while they're stoned, you see, yeah. or where, where they think they're stoned because it, come, it becomes reality to them yeah. under hypnosis. And then, you know, just to see the things that they do under hypnosis is fantastic. Um, and then I might get them to have a pleasurable handshake. So, you know, it, not necessarily me. I might say to one of the audience members, come up here, I want you to shake their hand. 
And yeah. I'll say, as soon as he or she shakes your hand, it's going to feel very pleasurable. Yeah, yeah. And the moment they shake the hand, sure enough, it becomes very pleasurable. <laughs> Um, and it, everything becomes reality to them. Mm. So I'm not telling them to do naughty things. Mm. It's all coming out of here. Yeah, and yeah. It, you know, it comes forward from their subconscious. I've had people say to me before many, many times, that person that was up there, she's normally so quiet and timid, mm. and yet up there under hypnosis, she was just this wild thing. Because that real her has come out, you see. Yeah. And so in a naughty show, it, it's hilarious that I'm – I still love doing shows to this day, and I'll always love doing them. Yeah. Uh, so just to see the naughtiness come out in people is fantastic. It really is. Have, yeah. you, have you had any opportunity to go on TV? Yeah, I've been on TV a few times, yeah, and I, I was actually going to do a show, uh, in fact, a few shows, but I backed away from them because I, I really believe, again, that TV shows, when you're doing TV, you know, it's – it's that um, it's that misconception that people then get. They believe that you just walk up and hypnotise someone and say sleep and they put – some people do. I've yeah. done it many, many times over the years where you can walk up to some people that are very suggestible and very susceptible and all you've got to say to them is, listen, look into my eyes. I'm a hypnotist. It's okay if I hypnotise you. Is that okay? Sleep. And they'll yeah. go, don't, because they're so suggestible mm. and so susceptible. And because if you've got the confidence as a hypnotist, you've got to have confidence on stage especially. Mm. And if you just walk up to someone and go, listen, I'm a hypnotist. My name's Mark Anthony. I'm a hypnotist. Would you mind if I just hypnotize? Just look at me and my, close your eyes and sleep. And they'll go, boom. Yeah. So it's really about, you know, that's how easy some people are hypnotized. So TV is good, but it is a misconception that you can do it to anybody. Because um, you can't. Okay. The whole, um, like you've seen in the movies, you know how the, the guy hypnotizes someone with the clock. Is that a myth or is that real? Absolutely, no. All that is, though, new. I've got watches. I've got watches. In fact, hang on. Yeah. So there you go. So, yeah. So yeah. I've, I've actually got watches. And, and the reason for that is because we use them as a point of focus. So, oh, for right. instance, when this is on a chain, it's a point of focus. Yeah. It's not necessarily the watch, but the belief that people have is that a hypnotist has a watch or a mm. spiral. So the belief they have is that they believe they watch the watch mm. that they're going to be hypnotized. Yeah. And that's exactly what happens with many people. So, yes, a watch is a point of focus, but it is also it's that expectation that they have of just watching the watch when the hypnotist swings it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, um. With your book, right, what inspired you to write a book about your memoirs? Because I, I knew I had a story, and I, I knew that I'd been through more things than many, many people will ever go through. Yeah. I've been through, you know, as I say, domestic violence. I've been through, um, you know, having a sister in prison for murder. I, I've had a gun held to me. I've had knives held to me. I've had broken glasses held to my throat. I've... I've stolen cars. I've been I've been through many many things. Abused, you know, mentally, sexually, physically. Um, so, it's I just knew that I had so much to tell people, and I know that there's so many people out there that mm. have got the same issues and problems, and yet they're allowing those issues and problems from the past or what they're going through now to stop them from taking the right path. And that's why the book. That's why I wrote it. I want people to know that it doesn't matter what you're going through. You know, there you can get through it. You can get through it. There's a, a, a great quote from Sir Winston Churchill, and he said it to his boys in the war, the, to the, the men in the war, yeah. and it was, if you're going through hell, just keep going because you'll yeah. always come out the other side. Now, it's what you learn going through that hell. It's what you learn in the middle before you come out the other side is what you'll take with you and that's going to help you move forward in life. So it's a real, a really powerful quote and and I'm just a great believer in that, that many people that read my book, believe it or not, because it's they find it so inspiring, they read it literally overnight, many people. Oh, wow. And there's 366 pages in there. It's, you know, it's very inspiring though. It's a decent size up. Where can I get that book uh, just for the viewers and stuff like that? I'll send you – well, I'm going to send you a copy, mate. That's okay, not from – I'll sign it for you. Oh, um, thank so you. So all I need from you is an address. I'll yep. give your viewers um, – it's it's actually roguehypnotist.com. 
Yeah. But if you go, if they go on there, it will cost. I, I think the the ebook at the moment is two ninety seven. But yeah. because that your viewers, I'll actually give you a link, and they can go and download the ebook version for free. Yeah. If they want to get the audio version, which I recorded, it's in my voice. Oh, wow. um, or if they want to get the the proper ver the printed version, yeah. they can go to the website roguehypnotistbook.com and they can actually get them on there. But I, I absolutely guarantee that they'll be inspired by what they hear. It's, some of it's very raw and very in your face, yeah. and that's the whole idea. You know, even the writer that helped me, I said to her, don't take out anything. I had three writers, and oh. two of them pulled out because they said it was a bit too raw. And, and you know, I, I used the word, um, you know, there's some words in there beginning with C and F, and yeah. it's not fudge and candy. <laughs> yeah, so... You know, I'm just a great believer in just give it to them how it is. Because when somebody, it's like in in my weight loss seminars. Yeah. You know, I might say to somebody, okay, I'm doing a weight loss seminar. So if you're if you're overweight, you know, I know for a fact, I used to be 16 kilos heavier. I know for a fact when we're overweight, we don't look in the mirror and we don't go, oh, I'm a bit cuddly now. Yeah. We look in the mirror and we go, fuck, I'm getting fat. Yeah. Yeah, it's all truth. It's all honesty, and that's how I wanted the book. You know, I don't, I don't want to be pussyfooting around. We don't want to mollycoddle people. We don't want them to be wrapped in cotton wool. This is fact. Yeah, this is truth. You know, you can either take the truth and and change your direction in life, or you can be mollycoddled for the rest of your life and pussyfoot around, and you know, hear people going, "Oh, are you okay?" Like, fuck all that. Are you okay? Let's. That's fine. But now it's time to go. Let's go. Yeah. You know, and that's what the book's about. So you're showing the people the real you and you're not really sugarcoating it or anything like that. No. Straight in your no. face. This is how I was. I'm not going to beat around the bush type of thing just to, yeah. you know, impress a few people. You just want to give it to them how it was. Absolutely, mate. And look, I, you know, since the book, many things have changed for me. I, I was, I've been married three times, and my, I've divorced three times now. Yeah. But um, you know, it's, it's just life. You know, it's just the way it is. I, I don't. Am I saying it's a good thing? Do I find it funny? I find it funny because many people are in marriages that they fucking hate, and mm. yet they won't come out of it. Um, I went on a date the other night with somebody, and she couldn't believe how honest I was. Yeah. She said, I just need to know more about you. And I just went, there you go. <laughs> and I went, oh, wow, that's that's honest. And I said, because why Why should I hide things? That was back when I was a kid. I used to hide things. I used to do things that I shouldn't have done back then. I don't need to do that anymore. You know, accept me as I am. I don't accept me. Not everyone likes me. Not everyone likes you. It's just life. It doesn't matter. Yeah, well, yeah, you should be honest at the start of any relationship. Rather, like I always say, you make the... Set out the, the guidelines or the rules or the expectations at the start. Don't, you know, pussyfoot, like you say, around, around the, the whole situation and then make, make the guidelines later or the, the expectations. Later. Don't set them later. Set them at the start. Otherwise, if you do it later, then um, you're just destined to have trouble, you know, because you don't know who the person is at, at the start or when you got into it. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Look, to me, Neil, like I was saying to this lovely lady the other night, and it was a lady, by the way. <laughs> so just as I said to her, you know, if we're not honest with each other, if I wasn't honest with her mm. and she asked me a question and I lied, look, we'll tell little white lies. Yeah. Everybody in the entire world tells a little white lie. Mm. But it's when we tell lies. So, you know, if I tell her a little lie now, that means that I could – I think I'm clever and I think I could tell her a big lie later on. So I said to her, look, if I, if I lie to you now and you find out in six months' time that I'd lied, you know, that trust in me from you is going to be zilch. Yeah, or you'd be yeah. really, and I'm like that with people. Mm. If I find that respect and disrespect is massive to me, yeah. you know, even if my children tell me lies, I, I flip my lid yeah. purely and simply because I find it a total disrespect. Mm. You know, we don't need to lie. Little white lies is fine. And I always say to my children, little white lies is fine. We all do it. You know, if someone says to you, how are you feeling today? And you go, I feel great. You might feel shit, but mm. you'll go, oh, I feel great. That's a little white lie. Okay. You know, if, you, if they say, hey, you enjoying the weather today, Neil? And you go, 
oh yes yeah, it's, it's really nice you might be thinking fucking hell it's cloudy and horrible <laughs> out there yeah yeah they're little white lies mm. but it's the bigger lies and if someone says to me how many times you've been married and i go oh well you know once and then they find out i've been married three times that's a bigger lie yeah yeah so i'm a total believer in just getting it all out get it all out and then if that lady doesn't want to come back out with me again so be it yeah, yeah? i get that yeah just be, yeah. be just be real be yourself from the start and if she Absolutely. likes you she likes you if she doesn't don't worry about it. it just move on to the yeah. to the next and eventually you'll find that that right person for you that's it and that applies to anything in life you know job wise marriage wise relationship wise you know sport wise I, I get many people come to me and they've been pushed into sports or into um, a job that they hate by their parents. Mm. And, you know, they come to me and, and they're, you know, they don't know what to do. And, and I just say to them, I'm a great believer. And if you don't like it, get out, get out and do something else, find somebody else, do something else, whatever, but just get out. You're not going to be happy. We're only here for potentially a hundred years. Yeah. Well, I can tell you now, the first 54 years for me have gone like that. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, life does zip past you. Like when you're a teenager, you're like, oh, life is forever. Everything's taking forever. And then when yeah. you uh, get through life or when you start to become an adult and you reach your 30s, you realize everything just happens in a flash. Yes. Gone. Yeah, it goes very quick. Yes. Yeah. So um, what are some of the tips you have for, for people that are struggling <laughs> with life basically what do you recommend them to do apart from hypnotism seek help so seek help from seek help from somebody that's been through it it's like <laughs> it's like going to a 19 year old life coach hmm. the fuck have they done for 19 <laughs> years old you can't put yourself a life coach you haven't had a life yet yeah yeah and i don't mean that disrespectfully to them hmm. i mean that in the fact what life have you had at 19 hmm. You know, if a 54-year-old man comes to see you or a 54-year-old lady comes to see you and you're 19, yeah, they've done nearly three times your life already. Yeah. How can you help them? You know, get some get some help from somebody that's been through it or get some, because I believe that you can't go to somebody who doesn't understand or relate to what you're going through. This is why my clients do come back to me because I can relate to pretty much everything they're going through in life, whether it's... I was a glue sniffer for two years, nigh on constantly. Wow. You know, me and my friends as we grew up, we were on glue bags nearly every yeah. day for two years. So then we went to marijuana. Then we went to cocaine. I stopped at cocaine. They carried on, and obviously they're the ones that have passed away. They went on to heroin and crack, and they died. Mm. But, you know, we all go through things. So if somebody says, if somebody comes to you and you've never taken a drug in your life and they go, I want to get off drugs, you have no idea what they're going through. Yeah. You have no idea. If somebody comes to you and they're, they're you know, uh, an alcoholic and you've never touched an alcoholic drink in your life, how can you relate to what they're going through? If you've never been a smoker, I used to be a 30-day smoker as well. So yeah. if, if somebody comes to me to stop smoking, how can I relate to them if I've never smoked? If somebody comes to me for weight loss, I used to be 16 kilos heavier. I can relate to them being overweight. So all of these things, I believe, go to somebody that's been through what you've been through or that you're going through, and that's how you get the help. And whether it's anything, could be somebody like yourself, just a mentor, yeah. you know, because by you using your words and giving them advice, that's that might be all they need. You don't have to be a therapist. So that's what I would say. So basically find a mentor that has had similar life experiences to you. That's what I believe, but they've, it's not that they've had similar life experiences, that they've got through those similar life experiences by doing whatever they did to get through them. Because unless they've got through them, obviously it's no use going to them. Because if they're still, you know, on crack cocaine yeah. and you're trying to get off it, well, they can't help you, can they? <laughs> no, they if can't. they're still, you know, sitting with two bottles of wine in their desk in the office, mm. you know, and you're going, them, going to them to stop alcohol, and they go, well, let's have a drink to celebrate the fact that you've come here today. It's not really helping you, is it? Yeah, no, so, it's not, no. Yeah, so it's that sort of thing. You've got to go to somebody, I believe, um, somebody that's been through what you're going through and come out the other side in a good way. That's what I believe. Oh, wow. Look, um, I'll wrap it up for today, but uh, thank you very much for coming on to the show. My pleasure, mate. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Do you want to show us that book uh, up there? Uh, sure. Uh, the Memoirs of uh, Mark Anthony, uh, 
The Rogue, Rogue Hypnotist. Hypnotist. And it's, it's just under um, roguehypnotistbook.com. Okay. If they go to that website, they'll see that they can buy the ver If they buy this version, I will actually sign it before I send it to them. Oh, wow. If they buy the audio version, they can they can hear the audio. Is the audio version perfect? No, it's not, because it's meant to be that. I wanted them to realize that I actually did it myself and recorded it myself. And, you know, are there errors and things? Yes. Yeah. yeah. You know, but the the ebook version, I'll send you a link to that, and they can download it for free. How, how but, long did it take you to write that book? Uh, <laughs> three years in all, purely oh, yeah. simply because the, the other two writers pulled out. Uh, okay. So yeah, and let but, me down. But you, yeah. it was a, a passionate thing for you, yeah? Well, it was, like I say, Neil, it wasn't for my own ego. Mm. It was because I know in, in the back of the book, look, in the back of the book, I've got um, a reach out section. Yeah. And in that reach out section, I've actually included phone numbers and websites for many things like Beyond Blue, um, you know, things like that there's many many things in there and i've also included inspirational books to read other books and things that you can read so it's really a help guide for people the help starts when they realize that i've been through so many things and if they're going through it or have been through it they can come out the other side and then the other help is that there's like I say, there's there's reach out phone numbers and things in there and websites, so it's it's a great book and and I know I'm saying it myself and I'm sure everyone says it, but I truly believe it's a very very different book to many of the other inspirational and motivational books out there. Look, I, I congratulate you on getting that book out there. You know, a lot of people will say like you say, do things but don't actually do it, but you've actually gone out and do it. But you're also there to try and help people at the same time. Yes, absolutely. Awesome. So, look, uh, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Neil. And uh, to all my viewers out there, uh, the links will be left in the description down below. And if you really enjoyed today's episode, smash like there, the thumbs up button. Hit the bell notification for to hear about future episodes. And don't forget to subscribe to The Neil Coots Show. Thank you very much and have a good day. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night, I raise my hand.